Welcome to the Upper Room. I'm Beth Richardson, Dean of the Upper Room Chapel. We come together in this holy space to pray with and on behalf of the world. As we gather here in Nashville, Tennessee, we acknowledge the Cherokee, Shawnee, and Yuki people, the traditional custodians of the land on which this chapel stands. We acknowledge that they have occupied and cared for this land over countless generations, and we celebrate their continuing contributions to the life of the world. We're pleased to welcome the participants in the Upper Room's Advent eCourse, The Wondrous Mystery. Our theme for, the for today is light and darkness. If you are hungering for community in these Advent weeks, please consider joining us. We find ourselves today in the midst of ongoing changes and challenges around the world. In times like these, we turn our hearts and our minds toward our loving, creating, and recreating God who desires to meet us right where we are in this moment. So as we begin our time of prayer and reflection, let's open our hearts and our minds to the presence of the Holy One Breathe in the love of God and exhale any tension or worry. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Let us pray. Come, Christ light, undying, inseparable light of love. We celebrate the offering of your eternal hope a light into our midst, move our spirits, that we might become beacons of your love light all over the world. Amen. Hear these words from the book of Luke, chapter 21, verses 25 to 36. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the human one coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. And then Jesus told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. 
Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day catch you unexpected like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the human one. This is the word of life. Thanks be to God. My heart shall sing of the day you bring. Let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Sunday was the first Sunday of Advent, the beginning of our church year. You remember that every year we start in the season of Advent walking through the life of Jesus. During this Advent season, we await the coming of the Christ child. We wait, we long for, we anticipate this miraculous gift that is coming to us. Love incarnate, love in the form of a tiny baby is coming into the world. One of my fondest memories from childhood was our family's Advent traditions. I grew up in parsonages in Oklahoma. My dad was a preacher there, and I learned about the seasons of the church year by watching and listening and participating in the services and observances that he planned. We had an Advent wreath at home, and on Sundays we would spend time lighting the candles on the Advent wreath reading a scripture, singing a song, and hearing the devotional for the day from the little book that the church gave out for families to use at home. My favorite role was lighting the candle. But over the years, I read the scripture or the devotional or accompanied our song on the piano. So then uh, a few years ago when the Upper Room's book editor called me one day to ask if I would write an Advent book for the Upper Room, I was so excited. It was the fulfillment of a lifetime dream. And then I started looking at the scriptures for Advent. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. These passages 
didn't describe the Advent messages I remember from my childhood. In these messages we read today, there's a, a message of foreboding, of watchfulness, of waiting, of being on guard lest we miss what is coming. This watching and waiting is not a sentimental soft lens picture of watching and waiting for, for reindeer clatter on the roof or for presents under the tree or for candlelight and silent night and the sounds of a cooing baby. My heart shall sing of the day you bring. Let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near and the world is about to turn. The scriptures call for an advent watching and waiting, watching from a forest fire watchtower, of being on duty at a job, protecting what's important in one's life or family or world. We are watching and waiting not just for the birth of a baby, but for the coming of love, the coming of redemption, the coming of transformation to a broken world. Advent is not about nostalgia or sentimentality. It's about love, not the easy, shallow love of Christmas cards and Hallmark holiday movies, but the deep, inextinguishable love that shines through the darkness of the present age. It's a love that transforms fear and racial discrimination it's a love that breaks into the aftermath of war and random acts of violence, that challenges prejudice and hatred, that brings hope to a nation or a church or a family torn in half. This love enters into hearts filled with aching loneliness or paralyzing grief. Later in our scripture reading, be on guard, Jesus says, be on guard so that your hearts are not filled up by the worries of this life. Oh my goodness, Jesus is speaking to us here today in the midst of a heavy, groaning, broken world. Our hearts are in danger of missing God's presence God's arrival. Our hearts are filled up with too much to do. Our hearts are distracted by worries about the future of the world. They are covered up by news reports and social media and multitasking. They are overflowing with grief of so many deaths caused by this virus of COVID-19. Our hearts are so full of pain or worry, of expectations that we often don't have room for the gift of the Christ child, for the gift of love. My heart shall sing of the day you bring. Let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near and the world is about to turn. I'm singing part of a setting of the Magnificat called the Canticle of the Turning. The Magnificat, the song that Mary sang when the angel of the Lord came to tell her that she would give birth to God's child. Every time I hear this setting of Mary's song, I'm captivated by the phrase, the world is about to turn. My whole being is yearning for the world to turn toward God, to turn away from greed and hatred and fear and turn toward goodness and equality and love. Mary sings about this world turning towards love. God has shown strength with God's arm. God has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts and has brought down the powerful from their thrones. God has filled the hungry with good things.
the world is going to turn. With the coming of God's child, everything that we have known will be turned upside down. God will bring down the powerful from their thrones and lift up the lowly ones, will fill the bellies of the hungry. We follow a God who upsets the balance of the world, who walks with refugees who are fleeing violence or famine in order to find a life for their family. We follow a God who sits beside those who are mourning and weeps with them, who calls the wealthy and the rich nations to end their greed and to learn to walk gently on the earth. And God is coming to this earth in the most surprising way ever, born to a teenage girl born into human form as a vulnerable, defenseless infant. And we hope, we yearn, we anticipate this coming of love, this opportunity to give up everything that we have known, to follow in trust, in faith, in love. We're invited to get ready to open our hearts, our minds, our spirits, our lives to a love that will change us, a love that will transform the world. Watch for the signs. Keep watch. Stay awake. Get ready. Make space in your hearts and minds and spirit. Love is coming and the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring. Let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. And the world is about to turn. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I want to see the brightness of God. I want to look at Jesus. Clear sun of righteousness, shine on my path. And show me the way to the Father. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I'm praying a prayer by Reuben Job of blessed mem memory. Let us pray. Often I stand on the edge of the light, afraid to believe, afraid to act, afraid that this story is too good to be true. But then in my better moments, when I listen closely to the story, move closer to the light, my fears seem to evaporate like an early morning mist, and I can believe again. I can believe that God, who made all that is, became clothed in our human flesh so that we might become clothed in God. I can believe that God claims me as a beloved child. I can believe that all my days are in God's strong and tender hands. I can believe that life is good, beautiful, 
and eternal. I can believe that not only my days, but all my days are in God's good and able hands. I can believe, rejoice, and wait trustingly and expectantly for the unfolding of God's promise given so many ways and most clearly in the Advent story. Thanks be to God. Amen. Beloveds, thank you for joining us today. And remember, you are beloved and you are not alone. Go in peace. Amen.